What happens when a highly evolved yogi has a close encounter of the third kind? All this and more in this episode of Unearthly. Unbeknownst to most of us, one creature has played a pivotal role in the history of the human race, the dragon or the naga. In the Chinese creation myth, Nuga is the mother goddess who created humans along with her husband, Fu Qi. Both of them are depicted as human till the waist and serpentine below. The Chinese even refer to themselves as descendants of the dragon. The very first emperor of China is said to have ascended to the heavens in the form of a dragon. All dragons could shapeshift into human form at will and several emperors of China are said to have been born of the union between humans and dragons. Dragons were so strongly linked to power, wisdom and nobility that only emperors had the right to wear robes depicting a dragon. After ruling China for 4,000 years, the era of these emperors finally ended in 1912. But reverence for the dragons continues to this day in the form of the spectacular dragon dance and to be born in the year of the dragon is considered very lucky in China. In Indian legends, Nagas are serpentine beings that could shapeshift into human form. The Puranas are texts so ancient that the word Purana itself means old. These texts mention that the Nagas had dynasties in Mathura, Vidisha and Kantipuri. Though this sounds far-fetched, evidence for these Naga kingdoms actually exists. Ancient coins with the names of the same Naga kings mentioned in the Puranas have been discovered. A couple of coins even depict serpents. Up to 12 Naga kings are said to have ruled over several Naga dynasties. Apart from this, other evidence for Naga dynasties includes an ancient inscription at Prayag. Samudragupta Maurya was a powerful non-Naga emperor who exterminated nine Naga kings and the inscription lists each of these unfortunate kings by name. But this disaster did not spell the end of Naga rule. The daughter of one of the defeated Naga kings was then married to the emperor's son and successor. In those days, everyone believed that Naga kings were directly descended from serpentine beings. Yet, this kind of marriage in ancient India was surprisingly common. This was because the Nagas were never seen as evil hostile or as enemies. Sri Lanka too had several Naga dynasties. In fact, the Buddha himself is said to have settled a dispute between two Naga kings in Sri Lanka on one of his trips there. The Bhutanese people call themselves Drukpa, which means dragon people and the name for Bhutan in their language is Drukyul, meaning land of the thunder dragon. In Bhutan, Tibet and Vietnam, the royal families claim descent from Nagas or dragons. In modern India, the royal families of Jharkhand, Orissa, Madhya Pradesh and many other royal families claim descent from the Nagas. Not just royalty, but countless communities in India, far too many to list here, like the Nairs, the Bunds, the Agamis, all believe they are descended from the Nagas. Far away from Asia and New Zealand are legends of Taniva or shapeshifting dragons according to the indigenous Maori people. Benevolent Taniva protected the Maori tribes and some married humans and had children by them. But Nagarara Haura was an evil Taniva who terrorized and ate the people living near him till he was killed by the hero Tupurupuru. Nagarara Haura is said to have a head exactly like a tuatara, a reptile native to New Zealand. Interestingly, the tuatara possesses a third eye which is only present in lizards and some frogs. It's also present in humans and in meditation, the third eye of humans is the site of the Ajna Chakra and has the capacity to perceive things that lie beyond physical perception and is responsible for intuition and clairvoyance. According to a recent article in Wired magazine, the third eye of the Tuatara acts like a compass, helping them to navigate and also regulate the circadian rhythm. So when looking into these myths, the most important thing to note is that with the exception of the seraphim, which are winged serpents, there seems to be a fundamental dichotomy 
between the reptilian beings of the west and the east. In the west, the reptilian beings tend to be negative, whereas in the east, dragons are largely benevolent. Negative reptilians usually belong to the underworld or patala and are sometimes linked to human sacrifice. Some ancient cultures were even manipulated into making large-scale human sacrifices to these powerful yet extremely negative beings. For decades, people have seen UFOs disappearing into oceans and in recent months, there have been reports of UFOs or USOs zooming at impossible speeds underwater. So where are these crafts going and are they linked to these myths? Reptilian beings have been seen in underground military bases and on spaceships. A few abductees have spoken of being taken to underground places during their abductions. Apart from this, what is the connection between these reptilians and UFOs? Ancient Indian texts say that three of the seven Naga races were banished to the underworld. What about the other races? Unfortunately, the Indian texts do not mention what happened to these Naga races. But in his book Apprentice to a Himalayan Master, the Indian mystic M speaks of an incredible encounter with the UFO in a remote cave high in the Himalayas when he was with the reclusive sage Babaji. This is the same Babaji mentioned in Yogananda's groundbreaking book Autobiography of a Yogi, published in 1946. In his book, Sri M says he was woken up by what sounded like the rumbling of thunder. He opened his eyes to see Babaji sitting calmly and beyond him, from between two parting clouds, emerged something that was the size of a full moon. But this object was a glowing ball of fire and as it moved closer, the rumbling became louder and with the sound of a thunderclap, it landed on the dhuni. He says the fireball, which was about two feet in diameter, split into two and out of it emerged something that gave him goosebumps. It was a large snake with a hood like a cobra, glowing electric blue, as if made of a transparent glass like material with electric filaments lit inside. Shri M says the creature bent down to touch Babaji's feet in reverence, hissing softly. Babaji blessed the serpent. Babaji told Sri M to meet the serpent, who he introduced as the deputy chief of Sarpaloka. The serpent then got back into the globe and they watched as the fireball shot off into the night sky. In complete disbelief about what he just witnessed, an astonished Sri M begged Babaji for an explanation. Babaji explained, In the Milky Way, there exists a stellar system with seven planets and 18 moons. One of these planets is called Sarpaloka and is inhabited by highly evolved hooded snakes. This serpent is their deputy chief. The supreme head of the Nagas is the five hooded golden serpent known in ancient Indian texts as Ananta. Thousands of years ago, when humanity was in the early stages of mental evolution, there was regular contact with Sarpaloka. The wise and evolved Nagas frequented the earth and spent long periods here teaching and educating human beings. Babaji explained that all ancient serpent worship was due to the reverence for these beings that had taught mankind many things, including the secrets of Kundalini energy. But over time, as humans grew in power, they became selfish and began to resent the Nagas. Eventually, they began to use the powers they had acquired from the Nagas against them. Babaji said that this culminated in a horrific event, a holocaust where a large number of Nagas were exterminated. Devastated by this terrible turn of events, the Naga chief told the surviving Nagas to leave Earth immediately. Almost overnight, Thousands of Nagas managed to escape to Sarpaloka. But some Nagas who were sick or old and those who acted in defiance of this summoning remained on earth. Due to this act of treason by humans, the Naga chief 
broke off all contact with earth except for a few humans who were highly evolved spiritually baba ji concluded by saying the serpents and snakes that exist in the world today are the descendants of those who were left behind and who through years of inbreeding have become retarded and no longer possess the great qualities of their ancestors if this incident is indeed true then it will challenge our current understanding of the world it connects seemingly disparate phenomena such as consciousness and spiritual evolution with aliens and creation myths the improbable theory of aliens visiting earth and teaching humans since antiquity being an actual reality will be hard for many people to accept and when baba ji speaks about how the nagas on earth have deteriorated mentally it lines up with the legend of patala being the home of demonic beings interestingly credo mutwa the african shaman mentioned in david ike's books actually says that the reptilians came from space but live on earth was he referring to the underworld of patala once again this brings us to the single most important question here are these beings benevolent or evil Some reptilians are said to leech off human energies like fear and anger. And there are some horrific stories wherein these beings are said to drink the blood of humans. Along with these are stories of the benevolent ones such as those from Asia who are considered good luck and who even gave the world kundalini yoga. Why is there such a significant difference in the actions of these beings in Asia? as opposed to the west for this keep in mind that there's more than one reptilian race and some modern researchers have said that up to 8 different reptilian species exist is it possible that this discrepancy is due to separate reptilian races being involved and does this mean that different reptilian races have different agendas on earth for now we can only speculate about the reasons for this at a point when ufo and uap disclosure seems imminent it will be interesting to see where it all leads to if you like this video please subscribe